أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول أول الأمر منكم and always a reminder from myself and عبدك العجيس الضعيف المسكين الظالم الجهل and by for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence سبحان من هو خالق النور that from these 12 hijabs in which Allah is continuously making a dhikr upon the soul and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and this seventh month and the immensity of the reality of seven. And when Allah is directing us, subhanahu man huwa khaliqun nur, glory to the one whom brought this light and created this light. Uh, Rajab is the celebration of that light, is the celebration of Allah is a treasure wanting to be known. So then the immensity of the reality of Allah and the ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad That we repeat it and you never know whose heart finally clicks. Mm. Allah is a hidden treasure and wanting to be known, not necessarily will be known. So it means that wanting to be known is Allah's immense love, is immense blessing. If not for this creation to come into existence, how would we know any of this? How Allah would be known to His creation? Means then Allah wants to be known to this creation that He makes throughout creation and universes and infinite amount of creation that coming into existence at every moment and fraction of a moment and a time that we can't even calculate its speed. And Allah wants to be known by the best of creation. So it must be a given. Allah doesn't want to be known by something less than perfect because Allah is perfect, Allah is, is beautific, Allah is, is Allahu Akbar. Even beyond the Akbar that we could ever contemplate Allah I'm beyond even what you can ever understand. So then imagine when Allah wants to be known he brings the nukht into existence. You know Arabic, nukhtat. This nukht, boom, kun fayakun, this nukht. Is the nukht Allah? La sharik, la shabi. So our aqeedah is and our belief system, there's nothing like Allah is completely forbidden to think anthropomorphism that any form Allah has, any location Allah has, any shaykh, any, any resemblance of Allah completely forbidden. But He brought a nukht into existence. Via this nukht he's going to be known. So then imagine how amazing this nukht must be. It's Allah wanting to be known, not the creation wanting to be known. It's Allah wanting to be known by the reality of what he just created of this nukht. So then it gives the immensity in our heart when we tafakkur and contemplate, everything is this nukht. For some reason people are confused about dunya, about physical, about everything in the physical world because your mind thinks physical. So when they talk you know from the haqqaiqs of Sayyidina Muhammad the mind and rational mind is thinking physical and they don't perceive it. So reduce everything to this nukht that Allah hidden treasure wanting to be known 
النقط كن فيكون النقط appears how amazing this نقط must be how beautiful because if you love Allah if you love the Divine then this must be divinely because Allah is beautiful this نقط is beautiful Allah is compassionate this نقط is compassionate Allah is generous this نقط is generous it's a reflection of Allah and the best and Allah describes that I created this نقط because we'll reduce everything to this نقط I created it in a haq I created it in a haq and when Allah want to give an alim an understanding he has to open for them their heart to understand the huruf. That's why Ajami understand the huruf so well. So he opened this nukht, I created creation in a haqq. Because we said before now it's not Allah but I created it in truth, the haqqaf. This ocean of hayat that makes haqq, that it has a ha and a qaf. So now we understand when Allah describing this creation that I gave it from this huruf of ha and I gave it every hayat, every existence will be coming from this. This is the subatomic reality, this is not the form. The nukht has this is not yet the form yet. The, the nukht is beyond the understanding of the light because yet now the, the manifestation is still not out. A nukht is just now appearing. And Allah addressed the nukht with haq, ha qaf. The ha that this nukht Allah addressed it from the oceans of al-hayat means I dressed it so that everything will come to life in it. I gave it a formula, gave it a qaf and what is qaf? Qaf al-Qur'an al-Majeed. Because now my Qur'an, my speech that's not created will be the power of this nuqt. So created in haqq. This haqq has an ocean of hayat, the secret of life and existence because Allah's bringing it into existence. Secret of qaf wal Qur'an and majeed that my Divinely speech will always be its power. And as a result this haqq is appearing and this is the reality of the soul and light. Your soul is haqq. Your soul is Hayyul Qayyum, right? Your body sleeps, your soul never sleeps. So Al Hayyul Al Qayyum, but before you and me came, that nukht Allah brought for His kalimah. Because Allah is La ilaha illallah. This nukht is Muhammadun Rasulullah Allah is not there. So to complete the kalima and the kalima is more ancient than creation, more ancient than creation that Allah completes the kalima by the nukht. That I'm la ilaha illallah that there's nothing but me. But I want to be known by Muhammadun Rasulullah So then this nukht is Sayyidina Muhammad soul, arwa, Abu Arwa is the father of all lights. And when Allah describing, because it's all coded for Allah that come in this way of marifa, come in this way of ishq and muhabbat so that I can begin to give to your heart. It's not just open you, open and you understood. But Allah says, when you don't know go to the people of dhikr. 
It doesn't say go to the people who don't accept zikr. It says when you don't know, go sit with the people of Ahlul Dhikr. Why? Because Allah opened their hearts to teach you. And teach us that this nuqt is in haqq. This haqq is Sayyidina Muhammad And that is the opening of the light of all lights, Nurul Anwar wa Sirat al Asrar. The light of every secret, and He is the secret of every light. Because from this nuqt, it now infinitely expands. So you take the nuqt, you look under the microscope, Allah makes then the nuqt to infinitely expand. Because there's a line and then there's a dot. So anytime you look at a dot, a nuqt, if you go into it and Allah expands it, the center always stays but the circumference infinitely begins to grow. So then that whole circle of creation is now coming into existence. And with the immensity of that light, the immensity of that beauty, that becomes the Muhammadan reality and it's encoded. Then anytime Allah is saying, Hayyu al-Qayyum. It's a code. Allah is not high and Allah can't be described as Qayyum. That's not something that we can understand. Allah is beyond Hayat because Allah doesn't have death. Anything alive has a death and Allah has no death, astaghfirullah. So Hayy al-Qayyum is the secret of the soul, is the secret of these realities. So it means that when Allah is giving the month of Rajab and Allah gave the knowledge and the realities to Prophet and then from Prophet's heart to Allah and to their students teaching them that this nuqt of Hayyu al-Qayyum, this nuqt of the soul and the light that we are born from that light and that reality. Our existence is coming in that ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result of Rajab, this light is now coming into existence. This treasure wants to be known. It's, it's nuqt is Rajab. By the celebration of Rajab, by the observance of Rajab, by the respect and ihtiram and the good deeds and worshipness of Rajab, Allah begin to take the servant to know himself. I'll take you to understand this nuqt because this is your existence. If not for the existence of Sayyidina Muhammad you don't exist, I don't exist, this creation doesn't come into existence. It all is manifesting from the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah just by a dot. So when they read and they read du'a and they're reading Ayatul Kareem from Qur'an, they know this code that as soon as they make a reference, Allah makes a reference, Hayyu al-Qayyum, it's a coding towards the reality of the soul which is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad when Mawlana Shaykh would describe Janab al-Haq, means our king who is the king of truth. Why? Because Allah created him Hayy al-Qayyum. So marifa is to take people to a higher level that don't keep attributing these things to Allah it's insulting to Allah Because you're inside the computer and you keep thinking that everything is in the computer. But you're outside the computer. So imagine one day that has artificial intelligence and start to yell at you thinking you're with him inside the box. You just unplug it. So all your artificial intelligence has just gone. Yes, Allah would just say, I'm not in you, with you in this creation. I have nothing to do with that creation. I am the power, the izzah and the might of that creation through my names and attributes, how it reaches to that. I am the power that gives this ha its hayat and its existence. 
I am the Qaf wal Qur'an in Majeed, my Divinely speech which we call Qur'an is the quwwa, the might and the power. So this light, its source of power is Allah's Divinely speech. So Allah's Divinely speech is now moving to that nuqt. So what Allah describes about His speech? Uh -huh. So that no one thinks, is it an angel? Is it two, three prophets? Is it a wali? Allah said, no, no, no. This nuqt that's high and qayyum and this qaf which is Qur'an and Majeed, He describes for us in Qur'an, no, this Qur'an nobody can contain it. If I send it upon what you understand of big, a mountains. If I send it upon a mountain, qashiya, it'll be dust. But it comes to the heart which is again qaf, ba. Qaf, lam, ba, qalb. I send it to the qalb and it's steady. I send it to the heart and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and it doesn't move, doesn't fluctuate. Something not created able to come into, something created means beyond your sciences and your understanding. What should have come and blown the reality of Prophet apart Allah keeps it together because it's not created inside of that created reality. And Allah gave that reality and called it a qalb which is again qaf, lam, qul, Allah's Divinely speech. Because what is qalb? Allah's Divinely speech, my qaf wal Qur'an al Majid to my lisan al haqq, I'm speaking to the ba. And as a result that ba is what containing this Qur'an and that's why all of Qur'an is in 30 juz, 30 juz in 7 verses of Fatiha, 7 verses of Fatiha in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, all of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is collapsed all the way to the ba. Means that's then the reality of Prophet that none of this can be contained anywhere except the qalb of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah gives it in Qur'an. But they need awliya to tell them what that means. So they think it's just a physical, he gave the message and then he departed. But Allah didn't send the message to the physical. Allah sent the message to his soul, his ruh. His soul contains that reality, his soul carries that reality. And not an angel is created but it's created from Muhammadun Rasulullah So Sayyidina Jibra'il, the jim, Allah gave him a nuqt from Muhammadun Rasulullah so that he could carry the wahi. He is the Muhammadan light, Izzatullah wa Izzat rasul first. From Izzat rasul wa Izzat al-Mu'mineen, he's considered here Mu'mineen, he's under the Izzat of Prophet not above. From that permission Allah gave that angel to carry that nuqt to bring the Muhammadan wahi from the haqqaiq of Sayyidina Muhammad to the physicality of Sayyidina Muhammad from Muhammad to Muhammad. And only gave permission to Sayyidina Jibreel to just carry the nuqt. He's not the nuqt, he doesn't make the nuqt, he just carries the nuqt from the Muhammadun Rasulullah to Sayyidina Muhammad upon the earth. Means then this immensity of this power, the immensity of this beauty, the immensity of this secret that Allah wants to be known by, by having a love and respect for Sayyidina Muhammad 
is the source of every blessing and every grace on life, every difficulty to be taken away, every blessing to be granted. Because its reality is that you're getting to know Allah Imagine Allah packed all of this beauty, all of this treasures and you didn't find it. Means what? You didn't find Allah. You didn't find the, the understanding and the beauty of Allah And that's why it's, it's not correct and not good. And that's why it's so beautifully amazing if done correct. Because how can you go through life saying that you love Allah but you didn't find His signs, you didn't find the compassion, you didn't find the rahmah, you didn't find the mercy, you didn't find the love and the ishq and the character that Allah wanted us to find like a treasure, you're hunting for treasures. Ashiqeen. Why they have so much power, so much barakah, so much blessings? Because they found what Allah wanted to disclose of His reality because they found the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And when they arrived at that treasure, the ishq and the muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad they felt that they have arrived into the presence of that reality. That Allah's rida and satisfaction dressing them, blessing them, taking every type of difficulty away. Do you see this perfected character? Means then you found my compassion. Did you see the amazing love and compassion of Prophet this ishq that you feel? That is my ishq, that is my love. For how are you going to find Allah if not through the most perfected creation of Allah and when you do find that, what Allah gave to us, I will love you. I will love you. Qul inni kuntum tuhibbuna Allah fatabiyuni yuhibbukum Allah. That when you found that ishq and that love, worshipness is only for Allah But when you found that love, found that character, found this, the best of what my heart should be loving is Sayyidina Muhammad I created no man with two hearts and no heart with two masters. So that means the, the heart and the love for Allah is the love and the, the respect and ihtiram for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad When the Muhammadan ishq is, is, is filling the heart then Allah's ishq is then becoming complete and beautified in the character that you found my treasure. I am a hidden treasure wanting to be known means you found my reflection, you found my perfected reflection. People can find Allah through the beauty of an ocean. You say, SubhanAllah, Arabi, how you created all these things? Through the beautific reality of flowers and nature, look at the, the love and the compassion that animals have for each other. And you feel the love and compassion for Allah you look at that Allah must be filled with beauty when He makes an ocean and everything such a beautiful scenery. So the most perfected is when you find Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi how generous can you be that you created such a reality that's generous to me, that continuously is cooling my heart to come into His association. Forgiving me my bad character doesn't ever look to me that you're not good enough for me, go away. But continuously inviting my being to come towards this love, come towards this ishq. And what Allah gave that reality is that you are my intercessor. That if they come to you and that you ask forgiveness for them, I will forgive them. And what month is this? The month of Rajab. And that becomes the seventh month from the power of awliyaullah, Sultanul Awliya which is nine becomes the Surah 63. Hmm? So means you found the haqq, you found the love of Prophet you found the, the love for Allah So all of this is the ishq for Allah 
Because the love for Sayyidina Muhammad is the reflections of the names and attributes. You find him to be compassionate, you find him to be merciful, you find him to be generous. All of that are the reflections of Allah in the best of His creation is His reflection of Allah When you find that, love that, serve that, then Allah says, then go and ask Him for forgiveness. Go in His presence and ask Him for forgiveness because if He forgives you, I'm with Him. I am His hearing, Hadith Al-Qudsi. I am His seeing, I am His speaking, I am His hands in which He moves, I am the feet in which He moves, I am the tongue in which He speaks. He is beyond Rabbaniyoon and He has complete power of kun fayakun. And his hadith al Qudsi is a description of Prophet So what this month's tajalli describes in Surah Al-Munafiqoon verse 5. I think verse 5. You guys don't have your phones? Let's see if that's the right verse. Did you find it? Verse 5. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And when it is said to them, Come, them, come to the Messenger of Allah will ask forgiveness for you, they turn their heads aside and you see them evading while they are arrogant. Oh. That's how we go to that conclusion, huh? It's Allah's wanting to be known. Allah is insulted by that, that this treasure, this nuqt, this creation that I made in truth, Ask these munafiq, go ask Prophet for forgiveness. Because they say, why you ask anybody but Allah? They don't read the same Qur'an you read? That's why Allah will come and teach, this, this love and this ihtiram is so powerful that your bad character will display who you are. And Allah describes that bad character that tell them, Go make istighfar, ask Prophet for istighfar, for forgiveness. Ask Prophet for forgiveness and they turn away, no. Means how bad that is. And that shows you the might and the majesty of Sayyidina Muhammad in Allah says, even if you teach them all this and then they go and ask Prophet I'm not going to forgive them. Right? Because it says in the next verse, even if you tell them the truth and then they ask for forgiveness, I won't forgive them. So it must be something huge for Allah Allah is now personally insulted that you didn't see me in that character. So it wasn't me that you were looking for. Had you been really looking for my Divinely Presence, my compassion, my mercy, the best of what you understood of me, you would have found it in Muhammadun Rasulullah So when you turn away from Prophet you are turning away from Allah You're turning away from everything of goodness and everything that Allah bestows. It's not something small. Thumma amanu, thumma kafaru, every moment they, they're believing, then they're not believing. And then Allah warns that that time that you believed and we graced you and the next time you don't believe, Allah sealed you and sealed the heart not to believe again. So it means the delicacy of ishq and love, the importance that awliyaullah coming to teach, it's not a hobby, 
it's not a part time and, and we take this life of ours as a game. But they're giving the realities in which to gain the Divinely pleasure, grace and mercy upon your soul, your family and communities because it's all Allah Allah wants to be known, Allah wants to be found. When this ishq and this love is taught, good character is taught that come to the way of Muhammadun Rasulullah Exhibit this goodness and this character, what they found of immense love, immense compassion, immense proximity because he's khuluqul azim. That you think when you're approaching Prophet that he's continuously showing himself? Or as much as they're approaching Prophet Prophet is moving away and they're finding themselves closer and closer to the love of Allah they feel the light of Allah they feel the proximity of Allah because of His perfected and beautific character. Never to put Himself in that place but merely a reflection of the Divine light and Divine grace and Divine blessings. So that when they ran to Sayyidina Muhammad they were running to that reflection that is Allah's lights and blessings dressing upon their soul, blessing upon their soul. And that was the, the khuluqul azim. No miracles, no outwardly showing that there's something different. But the ruhaniyat and the spirituality of Sayyidina Muhammad why they call Rasul Kareem because as much as they're approaching he's reflecting Allah's lights upon the soul. And then these ashaqeen they find themselves drawing closer and closer to the reality of Allah So much so that Mawlana Shaykh described why awliyaullah stay within their own limit and that each wali thinks he reached the highest level of sainthood. Because Allah's compassion and mercy is He gives them so much and so much within their being for them to feel content within their hearts, they don't need to try to compete. They felt the proximity that there could be nothing closer than what they achieved and Allah make them to feel content. That's from where? That's from the ishq and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Wasallam's perfected reality reflecting Allah's ishq that as much as they approach they felt they reached the highest that you can reach so that each of these servants are content within their own ocean and they don't have to take somebody else down to become higher. Allah gave to them everything that they're in need of. And all they need is to draw closer and closer. And the only way to draw closer and closer is by Muhammadun, Rasul Allah. They understood that go through the Rasul and on that lamb is kalima Allah. Why? Because in the reality of Prophet Sallallahu's light they go into the center and the core of that nucleus and what they found of is Izzatullah, the power and the might of Allah emanating from that ocean of power, dressing them, blessing them and calling their souls nearer and nearer into that reality. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from these realities and these, these nights. Why Isra al Miraj was on 27th? Because this is the time in which to go from your dunya back into the core of who your reality is. Isn't that where Prophet went in that nukht on Isra al Miraj? And in that nukht he went and found that, Qaw bi Qawsayni o Adana. Because his origin is Qaw bi Qawsayni o Adana. So when two powers come together, O oh, Adana, well Allah, Prophet described, I came to where there was two bow lengths or closer, means when the power of La ilaha illallah comes and what Allah gave of the power to Muhammadun Rasulullah what happens when two powers come close enough in electricity? A nukht begins to appear. They don't touch because we don't have wahdatul wujud, they're always apart. O oh, Adana, 
how close it is apart is the adab. And as a result, what do you have now? Nukht. How many nukhts do you have? Because that was just one nukht. Infinite nukhts are coming into existence. As long as Muhammad Rasulullah is always approaching La ilaha illallah because he wants to approach and Allah keep moving away. So that it's always, O Adana, O Adana means or near, or near. But as a result of that relationship, Nukht is coming into existence at every fraction of a second or less than a fraction of a second, we can't even describe the timing. And that becomes entire universes are coming into existence, entire creations are coming into existence and never stopping coming into existence, all of them under Muhammadun Rasulullah So How much Allah gave to this kingdom of Muhammadun Rasulullah We pray that Allah dress us, bless us from these lights. And that to reach these realities and to reach these blessings in Subhana Rabbika Rabbal Izzat Amma Yasifoon Wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa Bi Siri Surat Al Fatiha